Printed in Jumpstart, we have finally got a true Minotaur Lord that can be the commander of your EDH deck. I have combed the multiverse and I have found 26 playable Minotaurs for your EDH deck. Yes, one for every letter of the alphabet. Let's go over Sethron, Herloon General in EDH, and the video starts right now. Special thanks to our Patreon supporters who power our channel. Check out our Patreon for monthly giveaways, exclusive content, and even a starring role in our fanfight series. Link in the description below. Hello and welcome to the day. Thank you for spending your time with us. Welcome back to another episode of Jake and Joel or Magic. I am Joel. We are going to cover Sethron Herloon General, the new legendary Minotaur warrior from Jumpstart. But first, if you like the video by the end of it and you want to see more like it, hit that like button down there. Hit that subscribe button. The YouTube stuff, it really helps us out. Let's jump over into this commander. Sethron Herloon General is a five cost four four Minotaur Minotaur warrior that says, whenever it or another non-token Minotaur enters the battlefield under your control, create a 2-3 red Minotaur creature token. Then for 3 mana, 2 and a hybrid, either black or red, Minotaurs you control get plus 1, plus 0 and gain menace and haste until end of turn. Every Minotaur is going to bring in another Minotaur, and Sethron is able to give them haste and menace and a little bit of fire breathing on an ability that can be just absolutely mana dumped into. It's only limited by the amount of mana that you have. Let's go through the 26 Minotaurs I have found that are viable candidates for play in this Minotaur tribal deck, and a few cards at the end that are good for attacking red and black decks. Let's get into the cards. The Minotaurs that we're gonna go through range from very, very playable to, oh, okay, that one will work, to fill out the entire Minotaur tribe in the deck. We're starting with Neheb the Eternal, five cost, four, six. It's got a flicked three, so if it does become blocked, the defending player loses three life. And it also says at the beginning of your post-combat main phase, add one red mana to your mana pool for each one life your opponents have lost this turn. So that's going to allow us to cast more Minotaurs and just go wider and wider or have mana available to protect them in that second half if we want to cast some enchantment or artifact that'll do that. Felhide Spirit Binder is next. It's a four cost, three, four, and it's inspired. Whenever it becomes untapped, you may pay one and one red. If you do, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of another target creature, except it's an enchantment in addition to its other types, and it gains haste, exile at the beginning of the next end step. So this one is going to help us go even wider. Unfortunately, Sethron's ability only procs on non-token Minotaurs entering the battlefield. However, extra creatures in a deck that is based around attacking are never going to be a bad thing. Glinthorn Buccaneers up next. Three cost for a 2-4 Haster. Whenever you discard a card, it deals a damage to each opponent. Now in EDH, that's cool because each opponent, multiple opponents. We love that. You can pay two mana, discard a card to draw a card so we can filter out our hand with this Minotaur Pirate. You can only activate that ability, however, if it is attacking. But look, that's the goal of this deck. That's what we're going to be doing. Lord of Shatter Skull Pass. Four cost for a 3-3. Three, three. It's got level up of two. And on its six level, it says whenever it attacks, it deals six damage to each creature defending player controls. That is how you nuke a line of defending creatures. We've gotten ahead back up, Dreadhorde Champion this time, four cost, five, four, trampling. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player or a planeswalker, you may discard any number of cards. If you do, draw that many cards and add that much red mana until end of turn you don't lose the mana as steps and phases end. This is another way to filter through your hand, get to your minotaurs, push the land out if you've already got enough mana, and add mana to help you cast more minotaurs. Neheb is back again, this time the worthy. Three cost for a 2-2 first striker. This one's going to give all of your minotaurs first strike. As long as you have one or fewer cards in hand, minotaurs you control get plus two plus oh on top of any anthem fire fire breathing that Sethron's going to give them, and whenever it deals combat damage, damage to a player, each player, that's all opponents, and you, discards a card. Oracle of Bones is the next Minotaur I think is playable. That's four costs for a 3-1 haste tribute of two, which as it enters a battlefield, an opponent of your choice may place two plus one plus one counters on it, which, let's be honest, in EDH, they're probably just going to go ahead and pay tribute because if it enters the battlefield and tribute wasn't paid, you may cast an instant or sorcery from your hand without paying its mana cost. You can get into some politics with this card. You can specifically choose an opponent that you think you may be able to reason with and say, hey, look, 
don't pay tribute on this because I need to cast this instant or sorcery to take care of our opponent over there that's burning us down, and I need you to let me do this, okay? Rageblood Shaman represents an anthem for our tribe. Three mana for a 2-3 Trampler. Other Minotaur creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and have Trample. Boom. We're playing it. It's in there. Tongarth, because Tongarth is the original Minotaur in my mind. Five mana for a 4-4. Four, four. Attacking doesn't cause it to tap. That's called Vigilance. Two mana, you can tap Tongarth. It deals damage equal to its power to target creature. That creature deals damage equal to its power to Tongarth. So we get a little fight off of our Tal Room hero. I love that legend. Oncrop Crasher is up next. It's a hasty 3-2 three, for three. I do like this ability, though. You may exert it as it attacks when you do target creature can't block block. It's going to help our line get through. All right. And it's not a bad amount of power for three mana on an on crop crasher. This is going to be an aggressive deck. So we are going to play some smaller CMC creatures just to get minotaurs onto the battlefield because each minotaur is going to bring an extra minotaur as long as our general's on the battlefield. And that means our attacking line is rocking. Dream Shaper Shaman is a six cost five, four minotaur. At the beginning of your end step, you can pay three and sack a non-land permanent. If you do reveal cards from the top of your library, until you reveal a non-land permanent card. Hopefully a Minotaur creature. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Just another way to get more Minotaurs onto the field. That's what we want to do. We want to go wide. And when they clear our field, we want to go wide again. We just want to keep pushing. Fanatic of Mogus is a 4 cost 4-2 four, when it enters the battlefield. It deals damage to each opponent equal to your devotion to red. This could be huge. This could be a finisher or right abouts there. Get them down even more. Swing with your whole line of menacey, hasty, fire-breathing minotaurs. The Hurlun General can get you there as long as you provide it with an army. Felhide Petrifier is a, is a black minotaur. One black, two other for a 2-3 death toucher that says other minotaur creatures you control have death touch. Wow, this card is good in the stack. Everything's got menace already if our general's on the battlefield and we can activate that ability. So that means that two creatures are going to get killed every time our minotaurs get blocked. Such a good anthem effect to have on our minotaurs. Kragma Warcaller is a five cost two three. Minotaur creatures you control have haste, straight up. And whenever a minotaur you control attacks, it gets plus two, plus O oh, until end of turn. That gets to be the lieutenant for Sethron. That's so good. Merciless Javelinier, Javelinier that's a fun word to say, Javelinier. Four cost four. Four two pay two discard a card put a minus one minus one counter on target creature so we get to reduce a creature in stature and that creature can't block this turn just another way use these cards for other things get minotaurs onto the field make it so that our opponents can't block minotaur aggressors a seven cost six two haster but it's got first strike and that's the only reason i really like this card in here that first strike especially combined with our anthem flamethrower ability on sethron this card could actually get there and do a lot of first strike damage when it gets blocked. Ragemonger, three mana for a two three that reduces all of our Minotaur spells by one black and one red. That's awesome. I love this card. That's absolutely going into the deck. Continuing to work through our army of Minotaurs, we've got the Slaughter Priest of Mogus now. One black, one red for a 2-2. Whenever you sack a permanent, it gets plus 2, plus 0 until end of turn, and you can pay 2 to sack a creature or an enchantment, and Slaughter Priest gains first strike until end of turn. Smelt Ward Minotaur is a 2-3 three for 3, but it says whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, target creature and opponent controls can't block. Huge. That's what we want in this ability. We want these abilities in our deck so that our attacks are getting through when we're doing a ton of damage. Anaba Spirit Crafter is a four cost one three that just says all minotaurs get plus one plus zero. Oh. Boom. Awesome art by the way. This is what I want to see in an old card in our deck. Here's another old card in our deck, Anaba Ancestor. Two for a 1-1 one, one Minotaur Spirit that says tap it. Another target Minotaur creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Not huge, but it could come in handy. It's got a place in the deck. It's got a place in our 26 Minotaurs that are in the Sethron deck. Absolutely it does. Soul Reaper of Mogus, pay three for a 2-3. Now you can pay three, sacrifice a creature, and draw a card. This is a great response to your stuff dying. If it's about 
about to die or if it's getting targeted down, just pay three, sacrifice it, turn it into another Minotaur card that you can play to create another Minotaur with Sethron on the battlefield. Soul Reaper of Mogus is really good value. Zealot of the God Pharaoh is a four mana, four three that you can pump mana into. Five mana, it deals two damage to target opponent. Say we've got somebody on the ropes. They're right down there. They're under 10. Let's start pumping our extra mana into Zealot of the God Pharaoh now that we're out of all of our resources and just shoot arrows at our opponent with our Minotaur Archer until they are taken down. Minotaur Sure Shot. Here's another place you can dump mana. Three for a two, three. It's got reach, which can be kind of a weakness of this deck. We don't have a lot of flying, if any. Never seen a Minotaur with wings. Show me if there's a Minotaur with wings. Pay two, it gets plus one, plus oh until end of turn. So technically it should be able to shoot down depending on how much mana you've got. Any flying creature that is a problem for you if it's going to block it. Lightning Visionary is another cool one. Two mana for a two one, but it's got prowess. So this one can get bigger as we cast spells right before it attacks. And remember, all of these Minotaurs bring in additional Minotaurs. Wrapping up our 26 Minotaurs, we've got Gorehorn Minotaurs. It's a 3-3 for 4 with Bloodthirst. So it's just really good value. It can come in as a 5-5 if an opponent was dealt damage this turn, which shouldn't be that difficult to pull off in this deck. Now, we can't play a Minotaur deck without our Minotaur Planeswalker, and that's Angrath the Flame Chained, one of my favorite planeswalkers five mana for a four loyalty walker that says plus one each opponent discards a card and loses two so that's two to everybody and a card out of everybody's hand minus three to gain control of a creature until end of turn untap it it gains haste sack it if it was a cmc three or less at the end of the turn but really just stealing a creature to also attack that's as good as a can't block and if probably better and then it's ultimate minus eight each opponent loses life equal to the number of cards in his or her graveyard really am a big fan of our Minotaur buddy here and all of his chains. Let's lean into the flavor and play Angrath's Rampage. Two mana for a choose one. Target player sacks an artifact, a creature, or a planeswalker. It's flavorful, it's removal, we love it, we're playing it. Angrath's Marauders. These are some of his pirates. We've got seven mana for a four four. If a source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage instead. Our menacing hasty Minotaurs, we are definitely wanting to double damage. The Marauders will come in handy in a huge way. And then Hijack, it, this is his tick, down tick ability on the Planeswalker, but pay three, gain control of target artifact or creature until in a turn, untap it against haste. If they played some crazy bomb across the battlefield, let's just steal it. We'll attack with it and all our Minotaurs, try and use it against them. I would also be remiss to not run Mogus in this deck, which is our Minotaur God. Four mana for a seven, five indestructible. Devotion needs to be black and red equal to seven for it to be a creature. But it says at the beginning of each opponent's up, keep it deals two damage to that player unless they sack a creature so it's just this constant burn slow burn down as we're punching in with our minotaurs and trying to take our opponents out so speaking of an attacking deck which is what we're going to be doing let's run stuff like soul of new phyrixia it's that second ability that i really want that pay five permanents you control gain indestructible until end of turn we can play this in our deck it's fine with our colors because it's all colorless as you can see and it prevents our line from dying due to a board wipe or due to blocking or anything this will give our permanents indestructible and once it does die and they're able to deal with it, you can exile it from your graveyard to give everything indestructible again. A lot of abilities like this do exist on a lot of colorless cards that you can play in an attacking deck. Soul of New Phyrexia is just supposed to be an example of those. In an attacking deck, you also want to play things like this, Berserker's Onslaught. Five mana for an enchantment that just says, attacking creatures you control have double strike. Boom, that's huge. Self-explanatory, we're doing more damage. Things like this too, invasion plans. Three mana for an enchantment, each creature blocks whenever able, and the attacking player chooses how each creature blocks. We're gonna attack with our whole line. All of your creatures are gonna block that little one one over there. The rest of our minotaurs are gonna get through. That sounds pretty good for an attacking deck, I'll tell you. Helm of the Host is also one that's always good, but particularly great in this deck because we are going to create copies of Sethron on the battlefield and get 
extra triggers when we cast more Minotaurs. There's also a really funny card that can deal with Minotaurs if your playgroup is fine with running a joke card or two in your deck. Herloon Wrangler, three for a two-two. It's got Denim Walk. Any of your opponents are wearing jeans, it's not going to be blockable. I feel silly going over this card. Those are my picks for the Sethron Herloon General Minotaur Tribal EDH deck. Make sure you check out our EDH Tribal video. I've got a specific video that goes over tribal strategies from a general standpoint. Cards that would look really good in this deck that are red and cards that would look really good in any tribal deck that are colorless and they will slot right into this Minotaur deck beautifully. I appreciate you watching. Let me know if there's a Minotaur I left out down in the comments below and let me know if you're excited about having a Minotaur general. That looks like it could actually be competitive. Like I said, if you wouldn't mind, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out. If you want to support us further, we have a Patreon with monthly giveaways, behind the scenes videos, early access to videos. Go check it out down there in the description if you think you might want to join us over there. And if you want to hang out with us, we stream on Twitch and on YouTube. Hit that notification bell down there so you know when we go live and come find us on Twitch, Jake and Joel are magic. I appreciate it. Tapped out. 